Hey everybody, it's Austin Ward for Ledman Row, back with another Buckeye Q, Zach Bourne, former Ohio State linebacker, fullback, do-it-all extraordinaire, now Letterman Row contributor, breaking down Ohio State's defense, and Zach, it was a little bit of uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly against TCU. Of course, the big thing for the Buckeyes is they got a win. Yeah, it was. A huge win on the road. Granted, everyone's saying it wasn't really a road game with 70% <laughs> Ohio State fans. But uh, just the change of pace that TCU was giving the Ohio State defense game uh, from the start. You know, uh, Ohio State took a little while to get adjusted to it longer than I know the, the coaches would like and the fans would like. But uh, the adjustments that they made and came out in the second half, that defense was was great. And getting turnovers. Turnovers is huge, especially on the road. Uh, top 15 matchup, and the defense was able to do that. When you are a player, Zach, and you have a defense that scores two touchdowns but also gives up some big plays, do you go into the next week trying to think about what you did well or just dwelling on the mistakes? Um, you look at the mistakes for sure. It's one of those things that w when you play well or, or get a big win, you try and nitpick the things that you didn't do well. So I'm sure that's what they're going over. Not so much the, the really good plays, but more of the plays where um, they weren't gap sound. They weren't uh, all 11 weren't working in unison. And w we saw that from the big play that TCU had. Um, but this is something that you're definitely going to nitpick. Um, they have kind of a, a bye week this week yeah. coming up to, to get everything <laughs> in line. But Penn State at Penn State, um, massive game. You have to get back to the basics going against Penn State. Well, we're going to look at both some of that good and bad, as, as the Buckeyes surely are this week to get ready for Tulane. So let's go ahead and roll the tape. This is his second and ten. Hand off. Anderson has a crease. Darius Anderson has the sidelines. Can they catch him? No, they cannot. All right, Zach, so uh, we'll start here with you know, maybe the ugly, and we'll finish on a high note down later, but this is one of the plays I think that would get you pretty fired up, uh, especially as a former linebacker. Tell me what you see here. This is a uh, a record-breaking play. Yeah, this was. This is a play that I think a lot of Ohio State fans are frustrated with just because we've given up the long run uh, so many times this year. Uh, but what you see from TCU early on, they actually motion a guy out wide that you'll see that will pull Jordan Fuller out of the box. You see number four coming out here in motion. Jordan Fuller's pulled out of the box. So what you see, Baron Browning's up here on the line, right? You've got six guys inside the box against their five. You would think, hey, we're good. There's a high safety mm -hmm. back, Pryor's back. As a defense, you're good, right? We got six guys against their five. Really, we're manned up on the outside with help over top. Now, if you roll the play here, Baron Browning's got this side. So what you have, you need three and three, right? Three on one side of the center, three on the other. Now, you obviously... Isaiah Pryor wasn't able to get there um, from that standpoint, but what we'll really see from the back end zone here is Malik Harrison has to fill right here. You see, you see uh, Draymond Jones in a three tech. You see Robert Landers um, on the inside shade. Really, we'll call it an A gap player here. He probably should have been shaded on the on the center a little bit more. But you've got one, two, three against these guys. You need Malik Harrison to fill as hard as he can when he sees flow his way as hard as he can through that outside shoulder to take on this gap. If you take on this gap and stuff this hole, the running back's got nowhere to go. You got Nick Bosa here, you have Draymond Jones there, and Malik Harrison should be right here stuffing the center back through and being really physical, and he would have nowhere to go. You cup him as a defense. Instead, Malik Harrison decides to jump on the right side of 55 when really he's having flow come to him. He's got to play straight downhill. Flow's coming to him, play straight downhill. Smoke 55 through his outside shoulder to, to, go, to get through this gap, and they would have been completely gap sound. But instead he picks a side, is not physical with him, and leaves the TCU running back a full lane. The dude doesn't even need to... Uh, to, to stop with stride. He literally is on a full run, full out sprint the entire way, puts you know Isaiah Pryor in a bad position. He starts coming uh, to the left, to the inside of the field when really it's show and run the entire way. He should have stayed pat right here. If anything, he could have taken a step back to try and help. Granted, there's they're three by one, so he's trying to help to the three wide receiver side. But at the end of the day, bad angle here, bad unphysical play by Malik Harrison on that side, and TCU breaks one for, as you said, <laughs> uh, a, a record run. Yeah, longest play given up in school history. Malik Harrison did end the game on a high note. He got that interception to seal it, uh, but that's certainly going to be a play that Ohio State will be looking at this week. Second and 11. Robinson rolls. Deep shot. Down the middle. In the double coverage. Punt. Touchdown. 
Uh, here you go later on in the third quarter, Ohio State had, had taken some of the momentum back, and then all of a sudden, another big play, another 50-yard plus play. Yeah, this was uh, later in the game. I mean, this is, uh, if you look down second and 11, at this point, Ohio State was shutting down the TCU run game. The defensive line was really, uh, you know, tapping these front front five guys of TCU into submission. Mm -hmm. But what you see here is we go to a to a more of a 4-3 box. Granted, I think it's more of a man coverage that you'll see here. Um, you know, you see one-on-one, one-on-one -on -one here. Obviously, Kendall Sheffield out on the outside is playing man on the tight end. The, the linebackers are essentially me, you on the back, right? So if he comes this way, you see Tough Borland taking him. Mm -hmm. The back would have come this way. You would see Malik Harrison on him. So instead, Malik Harrison turns into the spy since Tough Borland's got me, you on the back. And what you see is this is essentially almost a cover one. You'll have uh, Went back here who's going to, because he doesn't have a threat, because he doesn't have the man guy. Yeah. So since he doesn't, he turns into the cover one guy floating on the back, and he just takes a bad angle, a really bad angle. He has to help anything deep in the middle of the field. And you'll see from right here, this is him. He needs to, to bust it. There is no other threat besides this guy down the middle of the field. This is his only help. He is not threatened at all. You've got man coverage on the outside here. He's fine. This guy's going short over there. He's already covered. You have to play center field. You are the Sean Taylor of the defense, right? That's what they call it, the ball hawk. You have got one threat down the middle of the field. This is him. It's just a bad angle. He needs to locate the ball and needs to get back and be able to play the football instead of playing so much of the man right here. I think you can see him at the end there. He's kind of still looking back. The ball is caught. It looks like he doesn't even see it at this point. Was You talked about the angle, Zach. Was he just late to be aware of where he needed to be on the field? Was it just... No, know? I I think it's definitely the angle. I mean, I don't think it's late. I think he sees it. He's you know he's back there in more than enough time. He actually overruns it. Mm -hmm. I just think he doesn't notice the post route. You know, he's taking it more up the field like it's almost a seam, and it really is a post, and he needs to get more over here because the quarterback's going to throw it this way. Everyone's going to say Kendall Sheffield got burnt here, but really, he's not in bad position. He's, you know, right behind the receiver. He's expecting anything deep. I've got help over top. So he's actually in good position. He's playing the undercut, you know, playing be uh, behind the receiver. Jocelyn Wentz should be above the receiver, and they should almost sandwich him, right? He's got to play the center fielder. Do not let anyone get behind him. Kendall Sheffield's, Sheffield's making sure he's not undercut by anyone, and it's just a bad angle here towards the middle of the field. <laughs> All right, well. the right side, and they run right into it, and the ball's picked up by Draymond Jones, and the Buckeyes have a second defensive touchdown. Yeah. All right, well, how about a palate cleanser, Zach? I like it. The good. <laughs> the good. I like it. <laughs> We got so, Draymond Jones here with a just a phenomenal play. Yeah, so this is something that Ohio State really started showing in the second half. It was instead of sitting really in a 4-2 or 4-3 box, they started walking guys up, making the TCU defense have to block guys um, in space. You'll see here that they're showing blitz with Baron Browning and Emily Harrison. And what you'll see is Baron Browning actually is going to drop out. Malik Harrison is going to go. Pete Warner is actually coming off the edge. So you'll see this is almost uh, uh, you know like a double D uh, blitz game here and Draymond Jones is just so good in the middle yeah. so good with his hands he's physical he's quick uh, Pete Warner's great here at, at this point he's told by the out as the outside guy he takes the quarterback you see him force the quarterback's hand he's right in his face so the quarterback's not able to sit here and, and know exactly what he's pitching to he just knows Pete Warner's putting pressure on him he's got to get the ball out of his hands Draymond Jones is right here you see him throw this left hand as hard as he can on this center throws him out of the way and is able to come through the backside A gap and intercept that ball. And just it, what he shows after the play too from an athleticism standpoint is unbelievable. He looks a little bit like, you know, Zach Bourne when he had the Oh ball man, I, that's a compliment. If you're telling me I look like that, that's a compliment. I saw you score some touchdowns uh, in the horseshoe, so I yeah, think you a can couple finish times, off yeah. plays. But no, this this was this was really good. This is when the defense in the second half started to become really good. Like I said, you'll see Baron Browning Show blitz, back out to make sure everything's good. Pete Warner's bringing pressure off the D-gap. Malik Harrison's bringing pressure off the backside D. And you just see this defensive line. What they do, they actually run a little bit of a game here. You'll see they're all kind of uh, forcing uh, the backside A-gap here on the on the zone. What Draymond Jones was, the, the their backside gaps. And, uh, yeah, th this is really – once this happened, this was kind of the backbreaker. Yeah. And for anybody that doesn't believe that Ohio State's defensive staff can make adjustments, here's probably Exhibit A in their favor. Uh, and it put the game away, a huge one for Ohio State down in Texas against TCU. They came into the game ranked 15th in the country. Not going to be quite the same test against Tulane this week. 
Uh, but Ohio State's defense might be without Nick Bosa, so put a little more pressure on Draymond Jones. We'll see how that goes, and then we'll have Zach Bourne next week to talk about it here on Buckeye Q. For Zach Bourne, I'm Austin Ward. We'll see you next week.